Today's toys are tougher than ever. Take the good guy dog. He can withstand heat. Hard impact. And the roughhouse play of a nine-year-old boy. He's Chucky. And this summer, he's back for more. In Universal Pictures, Child's Play 2. Action and dummy. Did you miss me? In his hit film debut, Chucky was just another good guy until he ran into crazed killer Charles Lee Ray. He's this bad man who got inside my good guy doll. After Chucky came apart at the seams, everyone thought the nightmare was over. They were wrong. And basically what Charles Lee Ray's soul was able to do was able to come back again when the doll was, was rebuilt. It had never left this piece of, of PVC plastic. He never left audiences either. People go crazy. It's unbelievable. People seem to have an inherent reaction to dolls. I think the fact that it's a toy and it's supposed to be cute, and everyone has had dolls or had sisters that had dolls and had dolls in the family, yet hiding behind this facade of a doll is this maniacal killer. I thought, you know, a foul-mouthed killer doll could be a pretty memorable villain. I mean, it needed to be something very that cartoonish. Red hair is always a, a sign of evil. Um, so red hair, freckles, the red sneakers, the suspenders, all of that, you know, just kind of a, a, a cute package. And this package doesn't come fully assembled. It takes over 500 feet of cable, nine operators, and Chucky designer Kevin Yeager to bring it all together. The hair had to be just the right shade of red and the and the eyes had to be just the right shade of blue, and you know, I had to have just a sweet smile. I'm gonna get you! But with the demanding action of Child's Play 2, ah! Chucky had to be more than just a pretty face. Um, in the first film, we used a little person um, and cut between the two. Kevin has now made it possible that we don't need a little person at all, that, that, that Chucky does everything in the film himself. And he does plenty. I wouldn't describe Chucky as an intellectual. He's more of a, an, a man of action. <laughs> uh, he's just out to, to may murder and, uh, and uh, raise hell all together. He's just pure nastiness in a, in a small form. He's a flirt. <laughs> Chucky's a flirt. He's a swine and proud of it. All the thrills don't just happen by accident. There has to be a plan. First thing we're going to start with is uh, Chucky inside the cage with Andy crawling up the conveyor belt, you know, and, and then get those stamps going. Kind of a parody of a Hitchcockian murder scene. Chucky arrives at the house, and of course his goal is to make his move on Andy, but he can't when he first arrives in the house because he the sees that Jenny Agutter is there with him. So he has to bide his time, so um, the camera sort of cranes down, and, he, and he's backing away from the stairs into the living room, and he backs right into the Tommy doll. Shut up, you idiot. I'd like to be hugged. 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 So Chucky just like grabs this statue like and says, Hug like this. Like it's, it's a great scene. The biggest challenge, I think, uh, again, uh, for us, uh, the crew, was to get, and the puppeteers, was to get the doll to walk, to give a convincing walk. It takes all nine puppeteers to work. We got a guy, we got a guy on legs, a guy on uh, one arm, a guy on another arm. Uh, three facial puppeteers working the lips, the brows, the eyes, uh, a puppeteer on the head and body, you know, moving the doll. But it wasn't enough that he had to walk the walk. He had to talk the talk. You've been very naughty, Miss Kettlewell. We wanted something frightening, something that, um, I mean, I'm sure there, in the course of your life, there are people you sound, you sit next to and you talk to them, and they just don't sound right. And, and Brad Dourif was able to capture that quality perfectly. Uh, there's a, almost a Jack Nicholson kind of quality to it. It just doesn't seem right. It just kind of, you say, you know, I don't want my daughter around this guy. I hate kids. So we can coordinate the jaw and the, the finger movements to actually pronounce words on the, on the doll. He can say A-E-I-O-U. A, B, C, D. And Chucky's creators can pull the audience's strings, too. I'd said to my wife for the first time that she saw it with an audience, I said, don't look at the screen, do this. And what she was seeing was, was people hold on and then grab onto somebody else. And that, that to me is good filmmaking. 
it's the greatest dating film in the world. So because they, they were always grabbing uh, each other. I think that they should have felt like they'd just gotten off a great roller coaster ride. Beware, Chucky's not the type of playmate you leave behind. I have one Chucky doll in the box, you know, and he's just like sort of entombed behind this plastic facade, and, and that's kind of a chilling image. And, People definitely do double takes. Also, I have one of those Chuckies with the suction cups that's sticking to the window, so when people approach the house, they're greeted by that. It, it definitely gets a reaction out of people. Sorry, Jack. Chucky's back. Hey, it's Lisa here with an interesting fact from Child's Play. Did you know it was inspired by a real event? In 1999, Key West painter and author Robert Eugene Otto claimed that one of his family's servants placed a voodoo curse on his childhood toy, Robert the Doll. Supposedly, the doll would mysteriously move from room to room, knock furniture over, and conduct conversations with Otto. Hmm. Now, click here below to subscribe, and also tap the bell to receive our videos in your feed.